are joined by sophomore defensive end Colby Way today with Coach Quinn. And uh, Colby has class at 12.30. I don't anticipate it will be a huge issue, but if you do have questions uh, for Colby, we're going to run him out of here about 12.20. So just keep that in mind so he can make class. Coach Quinn, go ahead and get us started. All right. <clears throat> thank you, Paul. I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, you know, as we, we look forward to getting back on the road and, and playing the game uh, against Eastern Michigan. Uh, with that bye week, uh, we certainly took a lot of time for our kids to, to do a little rest and uh, reflect and uh, work on ourselves, and uh, we're ready to get back into business. You know, this past week we saw a lot of close games. You know, you look at Northern Illinois and the Toledo game and how close that came down to it. And, um, you know, you also look at the OU and Temple game uh, and then Ball State, you know, did uh, to Eastern Michigan kind of what they did to us. You know, they were down uh, late in the game, and then with uh, nine seconds left, they were able to kick a 44-yard field goal. So, um, you know, again, this league's wide open, and it's, uh, you know, they're evenly uh, matched contests. Uh, we know Eastern Michigan's a well-coached team. Um, you know, I've been able to go up against Ron English when he was used to be at Michigan, and I was at Central Michigan, and then uh, when he was down at Louisville, and I was at Cincinnati. Um, he's a very good football coach, um, and I know they beat their two in-state rivals. You know, Eastern beat Western Michigan and beat uh, Central Michigan this year already. Uh, so I know how important that is in the great state of Michigan when I was there. So we're going to have to have a great week of preparation again as we get ready in our consistent uh, execution of our offense, defense, special teams. I think the biggest thing that these guys understand, we need to get back to run the ball offensively. Um, we need to get the ball taken away from their offense. Now, it's going to be tough to do because Eastern Michigan, um, you know, they, they've got a mentality of running the ball. They had over 500 yards of total offense last week against Ball State and, um, you know, and, and 300 yards rushing. Uh, so they've been very good at taking care of the ball. But we need to get the ball back. Uh, we have not uh, created those opportunities, and our defense uh, understands that. And our offense being able to uh, execute our run game with a more physical, uh, tenacious effort, and that starts up front. And then uh, certainly, you know, how important is special teams? You know, I mean, that's a critical element, and we've addressed those issues uh, from our kicking standpoint. So with that, I'll we'll open up some questions, and, um, and certainly like to uh, welcome Colby here. Thanks for being here. What did you focus on with the, with the extra week? You know, you talk, was, it, was it back to basics? Like those, mm -hmm. like what, how did Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's still about, uh, you know, when we talk about just making sure we're sharp uh, and, and clear on our assignments and uh, where all, all the pieces fit, you know, on each and every particular play and situation. And then uh, certainly the fundamentals. You know, great body mechanics, great point of attack, uh, footwork, and, and uh, just having a physicality and a presence, and we were able to do that. Now, we were a little limited with our coaching staff because they were on the road recruiting. They had a tremendous week of recruiting on the road um, as they came back because my, both my coordinators and uh, my strength coach and myself uh, were the ones here all week as those guys were out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I felt we had another great week of, of uh, practice. Uh, guys are hungry to get on the road and, and uh, you know, establish a, a finishing mentality, which is what we need to do this uh, these next three games. Especially running the ball, Jeff, you're, you're coming off a game where you struggled really for the first time all season long. You mentioned that was a little bit of a focus for you. What specifics didn't work that you wanted to work on in order to get your team back to running the way they had been? Yeah, I just want a physicality. I want guys getting in their stance. I want them to load up. I want people to, you know, strike into the, into the defenders, you know, from an offensive line standpoint I'm speaking of. And I'm not only talking about the old line. I'm talking about tight ends. I'm talking about our fullbacks, uh, making sure that we're fitted correctly in, in all of our assignments and, and making sure that we're uh, staying in a locked-up position until the echo of the whistle. You know, as I tell them, zone is zone, gap is gap. You know, we have those schemes just like everybody across the country. I watched the LSU-Alabama game, and uh, they ran uh, the same uh, similar plays. Uh, you know, maybe they're a little different structurally in their f formations, but, you know, it's still about, uh, you know, guys winning the battles up front, the one-on-one -on -one confrontations. And, you know, I spent a lot of time with the offensive line and, you know, with our defense, and we do a lot with nine-on-seven. With It's an interior run drill where we really emphasize uh, between the tackle mentality. And, uh, you know, we have it in us. We just got to be able to, you know, uh, get in there, watch more film, see what Eastern's doing, and uh, make sure that we're fitted correctly on every single call that we make. Awesome. Any plans that you reach the point yet where you want to get some young players some game action and get them ready for next season? 
Well, I think the, the most important thing is that we play our best players. You know, we have three very, very important games uh, to win and, and to finish and, and gain some momentum uh, and understand how important that is uh, because our best players need to be on that field. Um, and to say that we're going to move to putting somebody ahead of somebody who's not quite earned that position, that's not who I am. I'm going to continue playing the best ones, and, you know, and we've got a, a lot to play for, as I told them. You know, we have 17 days, you know, really. And if you look at it, uh, the, the thing that I challenge the team is that you finish out these next three games, uh, you don't have a losing record in the conference, and you uh, rival second most wins in the history of our football program since it's been Division One A. So there's a lot to play for. Uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. Yeah, it's been frustrating at times, but you know, I'm as uh, optimistic as any guy in this in this football program. And I got a young man here that understands that, and that's why we brought him along. He's earned the the position. You know, as a second year player, played as a true freshman, and he beat out somebody. You know, that came in as a as a senior, and uh, you know, it's certainly in you know, it's very encouraging to have young men like him. So he's a prime example of somebody that has been able to do what you're asking, and uh, looking forward to hearing some things from him. Coach, you talk a bit about that and your rise to this season. Yeah, um, this season really what helped me the most is what Coach Evald did over the summer. Uh, he put almost 45 pounds on me. Uh, last year I played at about 235. And this year I've been playing around 280. And I think that's really what helped like my game progress the most and be able to come up and where I am now. So what were you meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Anything I could. Was that, was that a target goal? Like to get to 280? Uh, my coach originally he wanted us to be at around 270, and I got to that pretty quick actually. So he just told me to keep going until I felt slow and couldn't really move anymore. Um Oh, I don't know. How many months? Um, I was about 265 at the end of win of uh, winter conditioning, so or yeah, winter conditioning. So or how, sp right before spring ball. How, how much have you noticed that that's helped you get that added weight compared to last year? Oh, uh, like, much of a better player are you? Yeah, uh, it's a tremendous difference when looking at like taking on double teams and stuff like that. I remember against Temple last year, it was it was pretty rough, but this year I. I felt like they couldn't move me, so it really helped a lot. What's the next step that you've tried to take now that you feel like you can compete with offensive linemen and you can handle their strength? How are you trying to you know, add more tackles for losses, be in more plays? What, what's, what are the next things you want to do now that you feel like you can match up with guys? Uh, my biggest thing is play recognition and also just playing my technique. A lot of times I try and do more than I'm supposed to, which ends up getting me out of my gap. So I just need to just focus on just playing exactly what Coach Oliver teaches us to do and also play with my hands more. I think that really helped my game. What's the challenge for you guys as defensive ends with another quarterback who runs a lot of option and, and who runs a lot, much like Northern Illinois? You know, how big was that challenge? How big is this one? Um, it's, I mean, it's like the same, just like it was with Northern Illinois. We really had to focus on keeping them in the pocket when they were passing. And also, we just really need to focus on breaking down and coming to balance before trying to make a tackle. How similar are they offensively to Northern? You know, they have an emphasis around the ball, no question. Yeah. But uh, they do it a little different. They manipulate their formations more. Uh, they try to outnumber you at the point of attack. You know, they unbalance and what have you, and they bring tackles over and what have you. And, you know, and they try to get the ball outside. You know, that's what they're trying to do. And then uh, when you start to take away a little bit of their outside runs, then they can hit you back up inside. So, But there's an emphasis in their, in their run game. You know, you can tell that they work extremely hard at uh, their physicality and uh, also try and outnumber you at the point of attack. And, uh, so it's going to be a great challenge for our front seven. But I got a comment here. Uh, as we recruited Colby, I remember we were in his house and we told his mom and dad, don't buy him any clothes. Uh, because he won't be the same body size that uh, when we're getting done with him. And uh, so she called up. She was very angry. She said, you're right, Coach. It's cost me a lot more money to put on 60 pounds or whatever it was. <laughs> but we're pleased to have him. And, uh, and that just goes to show the kind of dedication uh, and the kind of work that Kobe's outstanding student, great, high-character young man, uh, very passionate about the game. And, and th these are the kind of guys that we got to continue finding out there. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do. And he's a prime example of what we look for here. What were you lifting before you got here? Uh, just, just like uh, basic stuff, like with what my high school taught me and stuff. But I wasn't really 
I wasn't like a weight room kind of guy that much back in high school. So, yeah, how much? Um, because they want to run so much, it's what they primarily do. Yet they're coming off a game where, where Gillette throws four touchdowns. And how do you get a gauge on where their passing game wants to be? Well, you know, you got to – exactly. I mean, because it does open up your, your throw game. And that's exactly – you know, it's a prime example we try to establish. You know, when you're able to run the ball, uh, you have to lock down more personnel – defensive backwise into the box to stop the run if you're effective in the run game uh, which then puts you in some one-on-one -on -one matchups and if you're not trained and you're not disciplined with your eyes and where you're supposed to be you know they can get behind your coverage and you know and that's what we were able to see you know and they were very effective in that uh, but at the end of the day you know, it's still about keeping points, you know, uh, keeping teams out of the end zone. Ball State did that. They were able to come down late in the game and put a drive together, and uh, their kicking game really made a big difference. And they were able to, uh, you know, boot a 44-yard uh, field goal to, uh, you know, to win the game. So we know it's going to come down to the last – few plays you know it happened last year uh, that's what I fully anticipate with our football team against theirs um, you know we want to continue creating a championship culture around here we have to do that on the road we haven't been that successful on the road at all this year and this is our last chance uh, to go on the road and do that and uh, you know it's an important week for us and you know we certainly look forward to the challenge and I know our kids are can you touch on, obviously, you made the change at, at, at place kicker and then Fred Lee going into an Alex's spot. Yeah, you know, we were, um, you know, we were able to get Pete back into uh, a rhythm after the uh, Northern Illinois game. Um, you know, we put him in a competitive situation. You know, once we uh, were able to miss that second uh, extra point, you know, we had to make that, that, uh, that change. You know, we never really got Pat back out there because the, the touchdown was taken back. But, um, you know, we've had a good week, uh, another week of challenging situations for the two of them. And uh, Pat has really done a good job. He's earned the right to go out there and be our uh, starting uh, PAT field goal kicker uh, for this game. You know, but we got to keep Pete, you know, ready to go because if we need him back in there, we, you know, we may have to call upon him. Potentially, Fred Lee, uh, another outstanding young man, high energy. Uh, you know, studies a lot in terms of the game. Uh, has earned his chance to get in there, and we talk about having that next guy in mentality. And, and Fred's been able to do that. Um, you know, we're not going to have Alex and the services uh, for the remainder of the season. You know, and uh, certainly we, you know, we challenged uh, Fred. And, um, you know, he's up for the challenge, and, and he's up for the opportunity to show what he's capable of doing. So I'm very comfortable with Fred. Uh, that inside slot position is still going to be between Eddie Young and Devin Hughes. And then, you know, we have Marcus Rivers out on the other end. So uh, I look forward to, you know, our throw game being effective and efficient. And uh, Chaz will be, uh, you know, his old self. And uh, hopefully we can get some one-on-one -on -one matchups and get some big plays, explosive plays downfield. We get just an update on TJ and you know what his situation is. Yeah, you know, he's, you know, he's still progressing. Um, you know, he's going in and doing more visits and seeing the doctors to, to get a better uh, handle as, if, you know, what more he needs to do. But, you know, he's feeling much better about, uh, you know, uh, where he's at. And so that's a good sign. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing right now further to report other than, you know, he's just rehabbing and trying to get himself back on track. Uh, so maybe potentially he can play again. Uh, won't be playing this year for us, but, you know, potentially sometime in the future. And that's what our hope is for him. How big or not big is the adjustment for the holder to go from a right foot to a left foot kicker? Well, we do it every day and every week, you know. So, I mean, Jake does it uh, all the time. So, we transition them. And we try to transition them where you do multiple reps with the right-footed kicker and then multiple reps with the left foot. And then, you know, back and forth. And and uh, he's been – Jake's done an outstanding job for us. And, uh, you know, he's a great athlete, and, uh, you know, great attitude guy. So, you know, he's not uh, he's not phased one bit. You know, he's, he's on top of it. The only thing is, you know, with our formation, we got to flip our wings. Uh, from a right-footed to a left-footed kicker. And so we spent a lot of time talking to our, uh, our wings and kickers, uh, or excuse me, our wings and our tight ends to understand which side they need to line up, especially in those last second moments where you don't have a timeout, you got to rush your field goal team on the field. And, you know, if you got to 
take a wing over, tackle over situation, you know, it's obviously important that we're all locked in and you rehearse those moments so when the time comes, you're, you're able to uh, deliver. I mean, Ernest, in English, is, this is his third year. And this is the year they kind of turned the corner on that program after a couple, two, two more seasons. And, you know, and I know in the past, I'm talking like you've, run, you've referenced Novak and what, what, how long it took at, at Northern. How come sometimes it does take? You know, I mean, some guys can go in. Now Northern seems to have, like, a formula, so to speak, you know, where you go in and you bring in a coach and there's a continuation. But when, but when you don't have that rule on it, that, that tradition, that kind of, this is a, that identity, I guess, that maybe a coach comes in, this is the way, this is UB football, so to speak. You know, I don't think there's ever been a, this is UB football that's lasted any length of time. How come it takes a while to build that? You know, I don't really know, you know, how long it definitely takes. I know that this program has seen, um, you know, a conference championship. And a long time ago, I was taught uh, the ABCs of, of uh, winning football games and, and building and creating a championship culture. Um, and you do it with people. Uh, you got to have the right people in a, in place. You have to have a plan. You have to prepare that plan, and then you should expect your your people to perform. And that's what we have in place. And it's always about attitude. And it's always about belief. And it's always about competitive fire and and passion. And uh, what you need to do is get a collective group of young men uh, that understand that. And I keep telling this team that this is a different team this year. Um, and I know our record hasn't shown that, but uh, this team has improved. It has progressed. Uh, what we need to understand is that these next three games are as critical, none more important than the one we face this Saturday. And understand your attitude is going to be directly reflected in the outcome. You know, if you have the right attitude, you're going to have the right outcome. If you have the right belief, you're going to have the right outcome. If you have the right uh, competitive, passionate fire and spirit, you're going to have the right outcome. And uh, I truly engage my mind and, and soul and my concentration on these guys to play one snap at a time, you know, and that's when you're going to get the end results. And the more you do that, just taking it in one play at a time, you're going to get the, the, the kind of consistency in winning. And, uh, and it's going to bring along uh, the other guys that may not quite understand what that means and how that is going to be obtained. So I've been there. I've seen it. You know, and, and we just need to be able to uh, finish up this, uh, you know, these next three three games on a high note. But uh, to say that there's any one particular time frame and how long it takes and why some can do it, why some takes longer than others, you just got to keep fighting. You got to keep, you know, persevering and, and, and keep believing. And, uh, and I do believe in our people and I believe in our system and I believe in the way we're approaching it each and every day. And now hopefully, you know, we can get the results uh, because we're one point against OU, you know, and then one point on the other end against Northern. Those two games really represent the Ball State game early on. You know, we know how close we were there in that particular game. The the Temple and the Miami, those are, those are not the kind of football games that um, – you know, we could look at and say, that's what we are. That's not us. That's never going to be us. Um, and hopefully we can learn from that and be able to turn the tables this week and get some momentum for our last two home games. Anything else for Colby so we can get him to class? Well, I mean, I think if he's going to class, can you, if you, I mean, obviously we got, you know, the, the controversy that's taken place at, at Penn State and you're from there. Have you ever attended? Camps with where anything with the Tuskegee. Just no, I didn't go to a lot of camps when I was younger. Uh, the only Penn State affiliated camp I've ever gone to was a senior camp, and he wasn't a part of that. So, no, I don't really know anything about that. Yeah. Have you talked to people back home and they shot by this whole? Yeah, thing? I mean everyone. It's the same everywhere. You know, no one expected to see anything like that come out. So, it's you know.